Slovenia is dominating professional cycling, and with an iron fist, cyclists born in this small European country with only 2 million inhabitants have won two of the last three Grand Tours and three of the last five Monuments of Cycling, with three riders belonging to three different generations. The last of them with a cyclist who, despite having been surrounded by dopers during almost his entire career, not only has never doped, but also shuts up those who think that he has gone from zero to a monument winner based on illegal substances or methods. If you are one of those who think that a telescopic sea post is the marginal gain necessary to win Milan San Remo, pay attention, because this video will interest you. Let the show begin. Matej Mohoric moves to professionalism after being no less than junior world champion in 2012 and under 23 world champion the following year after making a complete exhibition in the downhill of the Florence circuit, proving that he was undoubtedly an excellent downhill rider, a quality with which he would obtain his greatest successes in the future. However, his first two years as a professional were not exactly positive. He signed for the Cannondale team of the dubbed hipster Jonathan Waters, and it seemed that the methods that took David Miller from repentant to stage winner in the Tour de France didn't work for the young Slovenian. He never came close to winning anything, and in the most important competitions where he was selected, such as in the Vuelta a España or Liège based on Liège, he ended up dropping out of the race in anonymity. It was then that Max Teen signed him for his Lamprey team, later to become UAE Team Emirates, and Mohoric suddenly began to improve his performance, as happened with the veteran Piepoli in his day, or the cook Mocho Kobo. He went from DNFs to his first win as a pro in a stage of the Vuelta a España, finishing in Cuenca, and again taking advantage of his great talent, the descent. Skillful like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, and powerful like Turbo Man in A Dad in Trouble. That's when he realised that he could be a great, like his compatriot Primoz Roglic. 2018 was the year that Mohoric decided to cement himself as one of the world's best pedalists. Signing as a shining promise in the Bahrain team, he reached a new level in the Giro d'Italia demonstrating another of his characteristics, his enormous depth of reserve. And it is now usual to see how this Lariaruccio usually wins in stages and competitions of long duration, such as this one of more than 240 kilometers to Nico Dens. In August, he had his brilliant month, and he managed to win the first two stage races by a comfortable margin. The Tour of Germany, ahead of Max Schachmann, Niels Pollitt and Tom Dumoulin, and especially the Bink Bang Tour, a competition now known as the Tour of the Benelux, in which he combined skills against the clock, on the climb and on the flat to win. At just 24 years of age, the gates of heaven were opening up for him, but then, unfortunately for him, Operation Adderlass struck this promising cyclist. After Stefan Denefel's confession, in which he claimed that he had been doped like a pig by Dr. Schmidt, as we told you about already on the channel. The investigation continued, and Slovenia, a country where Primus Roglic was already an established star, where Mohoric was emerging amongst the best, and today Bogacar was beginning to achieve triumphs in the professional world, was involved in the centre of the plot. Several Slovenians related to Mohoric, such as his teammate Christian Koren, his sport director and former teammate, Barut Boksic, and his former UAE teammate, Christian Durasek, were punished with two years in the case of Bahrain and four in the case of the small climber led by Max Teen. All of them, evidently, guilty of illegally transferring blood to each other. All of them from the same small country. All of them related to each other by having competed together and even being managed together. But neither Mohoric, nor of course Roglic, nor Pogacar, had any connection to this doping scandal. They just happened to be passing by. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Poor Mohoric, perhaps in solidarity with his compatriots, 
and entirely coincidentally, spent precisely two seasons, 2019 and 2020, with more sorrow than glory in the peloton, with only one stage in the prestigious Tour of Poland to his credit, and going from scoring almost 1,000 UCI points in 2018, to 472 in 2019, and 241 in 2020. He was 26 years old and seemed to already be in decline. But the sanction period for Corrin and Boxic ended. And besides, Mohoric was still at Bahrain. The Bahrain of Mark Padun, Sonny Colbrelli and Damiano Caruso, who finished second in the Giro d'Italia. Our Slovenian was not going to let the opportunity pass him by. Bahrain's radioactive year had started quite well for Matei, with a top 15 at Milan San Remo, a second place in the Barcelona stage of the Volta a Catalunya, a top 10 at the Amstel Gold Race, and another at the Liège Baston Liège. And it looked like he was going to tear it up at the Giro d'Italia, but a huge crash on stage 9 upended his campaign. However, the man with the beautiful teeth decided to make a stealth preparation, and he changed his goals. No more, no less, than the Tour de France, and on top of that, in a team without a leader to work for, and so with the chance to seek his own glory. He got it, and boy did he get it, with no more and no less than two stage wins in the Slovenian champions jersey that he'd won a few days before the Tour ahead of Bogacar. The first of those in France was a marathon day of 250 kilometers, in which he attacked riders like Matteo van der Poel, Wout van Aert, Simon Yates, and Jasper Stuyven, 87 kilometers from the finish line. The solo into the finish after a tremendous display of power on the flat and in the mountains, at 45.5 kilometers per hour on average. The second one was even more brutal. In the third week and just after the Pyrenees, the day before, a police raid had investigated Bahrain victorious, and the gendarmerie entered the team bus looking for doping substances. This made Mohoric very angry, and who knows, perhaps he was scarred by Operation Adderlas two years earlier. He wasn't going to let them mess up his career again, and so he did it again with a display of descending and leaving behind riders like Niels Pollitt, Christophe Laporte and Max Valchide. On that day, it was the same day that Bogacar played the Lance Armstrong patron role by pulling back Mikhail Kiyokovsky for trying to break away after a rival had fallen. His compatriot Mohoric, not to be outdone, imitated the zippet of the Lance as he entered the finish line, with a cocky and defiant attitude towards the media and those who criticised Bahrain for the use of Tizanidine as a performance enhancing substance. After these exhibitions in the Tour, a second place in the Classica de San Sebastián and another in the Benelux Tour, he went on to finish the year with two top 15 finishes in the European and World Championships. A trampolica season that made him number 13 in the world, in the same year that Pogacar and Roglic were number 1 and 2 respectively. 2022 has not started badly at all for Mohoric, achieving his best win to date at a logical and a normal age after his upward trajectory. Many say that he won thanks to the telescopic seat post that allows his bike to descend as if he were a mountain bike competitor. However, few realise that with him, arrived at the Poggio fresh as a rose, his teammates Damiano Caruso and the Curie's compatriot Jan Tratnik, known for his skills as a time trialist, but who since 2021, the year of the Slovenians, Times with the best. Mohoric, as a good leader of his team, got a fair and deserved victory. As you see, even if he has been surrounded by dopers practically throughout his career, he is clean. And if you think otherwise, don't worry, he will shut your mouth.